All right, so if we need to uh, look at the other cases like AX is equal K and BY is less than K or the symmetric version AX is less than K and BY is uh, equal to K. Basically, I am comparing this term with this term. All right, that's the entire uh, strategy here. Because I am trying to minimize, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I am picking the minimum of these two terms. It's either this first term or the second term. So the question is, which term is, you know, smaller than the other one? That's the entire point. But what I'm trying to say here is that if the second term is less than the first term and this first term is equal to K, all right, so therefore this minimum is going to pick the BY guy, but this BY is less than K. So therefore my utility is not going to be K, it's going to be something less than K, whatever the value of BY is. So therefore those points are not going to on my indifference curve. All right, so those points basically lying on, 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 on the, the, this part. All right, so X is a K over A, but Y is less than K over B. So this is the indifference curve um, when the utility level is equal to K. If you increase K to K prime, this is what you're gonna get, all right? If you decrease, you're gonna get a lower indifference curve. So as we move in this direction, the utility is increasing. Well, what matters, however, is that all those kink points, all right, are going to, uh, you know, lie, okay, well, hopefully this is a straight line, all right? So all these kink points are going to move on this array, starting from origin, and this array is nothing but AX equals BY line, all right? So AX, the first term, equals BY line. Right, remember, this is how we found this first point, where the first and the second term are actually equal to the same number, which is k. Hmm, so that means whenever I have a, a min function, the indifference curves are gonna have L shape, that's true, um, and one. Second, the kink points are going to move on the same straight line, which is first term equals the second term. Yes, that's true as well. So therefore, depending on how steep this AX equals BY line, for example, if A is equal to B, well, that's X is equal to Y, so 45 degree line. Or maybe if X is greater than B, so like for example, 5X is equal to Y, well, it's gonna be very steep. If, if A is less than B, it's going to be more horizontal. You see what I mean? So the king points are gonna move either in this or in this or in this region, but the thing is, the idea is that, you know, all these uh, L curves are gonna be parallel to each other. Okay, so now let's bring them to here. Well, when we bring them here, uh, well, probably you're gonna ask, well, what is this array? It's like AX equal BY. I mean, is it exactly equal to 45 degree line? Like X equals Y? Or is it somewhere here? Um, above the 45, or maybe below the 45 degree line. Does it make any difference? Well, uh, yes and no, all right? It does make a difference, obviously. If the king points are here, the optimal point will be different than if the king points uh, are, are moving in this direction, all right? Uh, but, the, but the important principle is going to be the same. So therefore, I'm going to assume without loss of generality that AX equals BY is this array. So what does that mean? That means the indifference curves are gonna move on this line. So let's keep moving. So remember the idea? So it was, what is the highest utility level we can achieve uh, given the budget set we have? So within this triangle and on the boundaries, obviously, uh, what is the highest utility I can get? Well, at least what I draw, this is the highest utility level, but the thing is, none of the points on this blue line is affordable because all of them are outside of the budget set. So here, Clearly, there's only this point where one, it is affordable, two, it gives the highest utility level, right? Okay, so therefore, this must be the optimal point. 
the observation is that this, this point, this optimal point, is actually the point where my budget line and my indifference curves are touching to each other on that corner of the L shape. All right, so what is the property of this corner point of those indifference curves? Well, remember, it's nothing but AX equals BY. Hmm. So can I basically generalize this observation? So let me uh, open up some space here and say, whenever I have perfect complement example, regardless of the value of A and B, I almost, I always must have an optimal solution and by which I understand that it solves this maximization problem. So the optimal solution X star and Y star must satisfy one, they are on the king point, meaning given that this is my utility function, A X star must be equal to B y star and second well it must be on the budget line meaning a up oh, sorry the budget line is px x star plus py y star equals income so i have two unknowns x star y star two equations and so i can solve x star and y star that's it that's basically how we solve utility maximization problem for two uh, perfect complement goods. Well, for this specific example, how do we solve it? Well, I mean, let's use it. The first equation, forget about stars for now. I can put the stars at the end, but the solution must satisfy AX equals BY. So I'm just gonna leave X alone. So I'm gonna write B over AY. All right, so I'm going to plug this into the second constraint. So it's PX instead of X, I'm going to write B over AY plus PYY equals income. So I would like to leave Y alone, which basically means when I take the Y parenthesis here, I will have uh, BPX plus APY divided by A equals income so voila I, I found y star so now i can put star because i found the value it's basically i times income divided by uh, apy plus bpx how can i find x star well simple remember x was equal to b over a times y so just multiply this y star guy with b over a so a's will cancel out and so the x now i can put star is equal to, uh, you know, the star basically means I found the optimal solution, all right? It's just, you know, underlying that I found the solution. So you don't really need to put star there. Um, so it shouldn't confuse you. It's not a, a different parameter, all right? It's the same parameter. It's just the star, whenever I put star, it basically means, all right, there you go, the solution. So bi divided by apy plus bpx. So it's sort of the symmetric version. So instead of a, I have b here. All right, so this is how we solve this optimization problem. I'm not going to uh, sort of fully solve it, but very uh, uh, a similar question would be if utility of x, y is equal to uh, minimum of a x plus b y comma uh, c x plus d y, where a, B, C, D are all some uh, positive real numbers. Okay, so this is again a, a min function, right? It's like complementary goods, but there's also this uh, uh, substitute, uh, uh, substitute, perfect substitute type of uh, relationship. So it's sort of a combination between substitution and, and, and complementarity. So how am I going to solve it? Again, the Lagrangian is not going to help you because you cannot uh, differentiate this function. So you have to drive, uh, you have to draw the indifference curves. But please spend some time to be able to understand how the indifference curves will look like. But what I can say, uh, these indifference curves are going to have, you know, uh, two properties. One, uh, this term equals this term 
AX plus BY equals CX plus DY is going to give you the array of uh, king points movement. All right, so the king points are going to move in the XY space on this line, which is exactly equal to AX. So the first term equals the second term. Exactly the same idea here. All right, but do we have L shape in difference curves? No. All right, so you have to be careful about it. Well, um, these indifference curves are going to have slope, all right? So for example, above this line, what does that mean? So, uh, so whenever AXBY is greater than CXDY, we are either above this curve or below this uh, curve, depending on the value of X and Y. So therefore, uh, the slope of an indifference curve are gonna look probably like this. So another indifference curve, so they're gonna be uh, parallel to each other. Alternatively, again, depending on the A and B, C and D, my indifference curves may have this sort of uh, slopes. Again, depending on the X, uh, I'm sorry, A, B, C and D values. All right, <clears throat> so what does that mean? That means when I draw my budget line, all right, so let's say my budget line is something like this. So here I have to compare slope of uh, this term, the first term, the slope of the second term, and then the slope of the budget line to figure out where the optimal should be. The optimal can be at the you know, one boundary where you consume your entire income on good Y or the opposite boundary X or it may be the interior solution where you are either consuming all the points on, on this part of the uh, budget line or the lower part of the budget line, depending on may, whether your budget line and, and the uh, indifference curves, the upper side or the lower side are maybe tangent to each other. All right, so again, you have to compare three slopes. Slope of the first line, first term, slope of the second term, and the slope of the budget line. So in the standard uh, uh, min function, I didn't have to do it because you know the slope of the first and the second term are obvious, right? And the budget line slope is neither one of those. But here, the budget line slopes may be equal or greater or less than the slope of these two guys. So be careful about this. So the optimization uh, problem is a bit more complicated in this environment, but the essence, the approach is exactly the same. All right, I hope that was clear and hope to see you another time.